Hello, thank you for joining us on the news. I'm Ruth Aguele. My sign language interpreter is Shagun Ajayi. Let's bring you the headlines. President Tinumbu goes on annual leave to Bats Abuja for the United Kingdom. Federal government inaugurates technical committee to review state of dams. And Gabon claims sovereignty over three islands in Equatorial Guinea. President Bola Tinubu has departed Abuja for the United Kingdom for a two-week vacation, part of his yearly leave. The president departed through the Inamdi Azikiwe International Airport at about 2.30 p.m. this Wednesday. Secretary to the Government on the Fe of the Federation, George Akume, and Chief of Staff, Femi Bajabi Amila, were among the top government functionaries who bade the president farewell. A statement by the Presidential Advisor on Information and Strategy, Bayo Onanuga, indicates that the president will spend two weeks as a working vacation and a retreat to reflect on his administration's economic reforms. He is expected to return after the leave expires. Meanwhile, before President Bola Ametinibu departed, um, he granted express approval to the Northeast Development Commission for the deployment of electrical vehicles in its catchment states. The NEDC, along with its Chinese partners, presented the samples of the electric vehicles for exhibition at the State House. President Tinubu, alongside Vice President Kashim Shatima, inspected the vehicles, including a 40-passenger capacity bus, saloon cars, and eight-passenger capacity tricycles. The president expressed satisfaction, following which he approved that the commission should go ahead and deploy the e-mobility in the northeast region of the country. The chief executive officer of the commission, Mohamed al Kali, who briefed State House correspondents on this development, says, the Commission would, in the next two years, produce over 10,000 e-vehicles under this initiative. He said the Commission has also obtained presidential approval to build five 10 kVA modular solar power units in each of the six states within its jurisdiction as alternative sources of recharging the vehicles. We don't have gas in the nose for now. But a vehicle, what you need is the power to power all e facilities. As part of the arrangement is for us to establish a very comprehensive composite char charging facilities for all our e facilities, I mean e vehicles or e, e tricycle. This is already a part of the work plan which we are trying to do. The chief executive officer added that state governors within the sub-region have equally agreed to provide suitable locations for the construction of the modular solar units. In other news, in significant boost to Borno state economy, Governor Babagana Umar Zulum has successfully attracted major investments at the Foreign Investment Network Deal Room and Forbes Best of Africa Award held in New York at the sidelines of the ongoing United Nations General Assembly. Let's see that. It is yet another gathering of global leaders in New York and all eyes are on Borno State as the state continues to take giant strides in attracting mm -hmm. investors. Those Professor areas. Zulum, represented by Dr. Miru Mandara, seal groundbreaking deals that will propel Bruno State's economy forward. One notable partnership is with the International Data Center Authority, IDCA, to develop digital infrastructure and boost sustainable digital economies in Africa, with a staggering potential GDP of $4 trillion by 2028. Other MOUs facilitated by FIN include agreements between Borno State Government and GTIF Capital to collaborate on investments and development projects in sports, technology, healthcare, media, and branding. 
Governor Zulum's commitment to rebuild and burn the state after the Boko Haram insurgency earned him the prestigious Forbes Best of Africa Leadership Award. Building over 100 new mega schools and also over 14 functional vocational education. In 2022, the government built houses and did what is considered as impossible in the humanitarian space, moving nearly a million people out of internally displaced camps into homes in Borno State. The governor invites investors to explore opportunities in Borno State, emphasizing its potential for growth and development. The Foreign Investment Network also signed MOUs with Asian African Chamber of Commerce and Industry, U.S. and Japan Chapter, and 99 Info Systems to promote trade, investment, and economic development between Africa and Asia, and to promote AI technology solutions in African countries. Preceding the deal room, the FIN hosted its fourth international trade and investment forum in collaboration with the African Business Roundtable. The event with the theme, Power for Africa, featured esteemed speakers and global leaders. Worried by the attacks on Hezbollah and all the areas in Lebanon by Israeli government, the Nigerians and Diaspora Commission is advising Nigerians resident in Lebanon to consider moving out of the country now that commercial flights are still in operation. In a release signed by the Director of Media, Public Relations and Protocols, Abdurrahman Balogun says information from the Nigerian community in Lebanon indicates that most Nigerians have relocated from the southern part and are now relatively safe. It is gratifying, he says, to note that thus far no Nigerian has witnessed any form of accident or injury. He advised them to continue to remain safe while the war lasts and to lie with the country's embassy in Lebanon for necessary guidance regarding their safety. He also assured them that their safety is of utmost concern to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the commission says. British Prime Minister Keir Starmer has vowed to put ties with the European Union on a positive footing as he kicked off the first visit to Brussels, aimed at rebooting relations after the rancor of Brexit. In other news, Gabon presented a case at the International Court of Justice in a dispute with Equatorial Guinea over oil-rich islands. Details with this, um, let's get it from Justin Benmungi. British Prime Minister Keir Starmer has promised a reset with the European Union, but since taking power in July, has given few details about how to improve on the painstakingly negotiated deals governing ties since the UK quit the bloc. Keir Starmer met with European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen in Brussels. During a joint press conference, both leaders condemned the Tuesday attack by Iran on Israel. The European Union therefore continues to call for a ceasefire across the border with Lebanon, consistent with the Resolution 1701, and the border in Gaza. And we will keep calling for the release of all hostages as we have done for almost a year now. Uh, we do need to pull back from the brink and to encourage all parties uh, to find a way to de-escalate and for a political solution to the, to the very many fronts of the crisis in the Middle East. Similarly, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called for an end to the sickening cycle of escalation in the Middle East, where conflict rages between Israel, Iran, its allies, Hezbollah and Hamas. It's high time to stop the sickening cycle of escalation after escalation that is leading the people of the Middle East straight over the cliff. Each escalation has served as a pretext for the next. In other news, Gabon has claimed sovereignty over three islands in oil-rich waters, telling the International Court of Justice the matter had already been settled by a 1974 treaty disputed by Equatorial Guinea. 
The two West African nations have been squabbling over the 30-hectare island of Mbaini and two smaller low-lying islets, Kokotia and Konga, since the early 1970s. The islands are tiny and virtually uninhabited, but lie in an area potentially rich in oil and gas. The dispute dates back to 1900, when then colonial powers France and Spain signed a treaty in Paris, setting out the borders between the two countries. Justin Bemuni, NT News. Chinese President Xi Jinping and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin exchange congratulatory messages on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the establishment of bilateral diplomatic relations between the two countries. Here is Justin Bem Unyi again. Xi Jinping delivered a statement in a congratulatory message that was sent to Russian President Vladimir Putin on the 75th anniversary of diplomatic ties between the two countries. Reports say Chinese President Xi Jinping on Wednesday said lasting good neighborliness comprehensive strategic coordination and mutually beneficial cooperation have become the most essential features of bilateral ties between China and Russia. The Chinese news agency said, quoting a statement from the Chinese leader, that China and Russia, both major countries of the world and key emerging markets, are each other's largest neighbor. Since the establishment of diplomatic ties 75 years ago, the two sides have continuously upgraded the quality of bilateral ties based on the fundamental interests of the two countries and two peoples while drawing from historical experience. Putin also said China and Russia keep developing active cooperation regarding various political, trade, economic, scientific and technical issues effectively cooperating in international and regional affairs and are jointly committed to building a just and multipolar world. Justin Bemuni, NTN News. The success is recorded by the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, since its inception, are largely because of the invaluable contribution and support of Nigeria its host country. And as Nigeria marks the 64th, its 64th independence anniversary, the president of the ECOWAS Commission, Dr. Omar Aliu Torre, says Nigeria's leadership role will be more strategic to propel the regional bloc into a future of political stability and prosperity. Kelvin and Ehonwahe reports. It was a gathering of Nigerian community in ECOWAS to celebrate the nation's 64th independence anniversary. Essentially, not for speeches, but an appreciation message to the event by the President of ECOWAS Commission set the tune for the celebration where members of Nigerian community at the ECOWAS Commission came together in unison to back their country's ability to emerge stronger from its current challenges into a global and continental economic giant. We congratulate the Nigerians that are working here because they are the bedrock of the organization. Uh, we have identified some of them that have been performing credibly well in ensuring that the organization is meeting its objective. As Nigerians, we have every right to celebrate more successes. We shouldn't be emphasizing more of problems. Nigeria has made tremendous progress. It is an opportunity for us to celebrate our country to appreciate the effort and the sacrifices of our forefathers and to be able to build a legacy for the younger generations that are coming behind us. It was also used to recognize and honor some members of the Nigerian community in ECOWAS who have served the Commission Association diligently. In Abuja, Kelvin Ewunwaye, NCA News. Well, let's take a break. We'll be back shortly. Stay tuned. Good to have you there. Following the recent flooding incident in Borno State, the federal government has inaugurated an inter-ministerial technical committee on evaluation of dams in Nigeria. The committee, which is to be headed by the Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, is to enable the country to mitigate issues leading to perennial flooding across the nation. Osman Zubairo reports. Nigeria has more than 340 dams across the country. 
comprising 142 large dams, 59 medium, and 207 small dams, which serve various purposes, including water supply, irrigation, and hydropower generation. Investigations revealed that most of these dams constructed over many decades were designed with spillways to allow free flow of water and facilities in compliance with international standards. In spite of that, the country has experienced the collapse of dams and reservoirs. The recent one is that of Medigudi flood. In response to this development, the federal government saw the need to constitute an interministerial committee to evaluate dams in the country. The technical committee has the overall primary objectives of evaluating the physical condition of dams, assessing the social and environmental implications of the collapse of dams on local community, and draw up programs to tackle these challenges. It's going to be felt to do a real evaluation of the situation, the proper to this committee, that will in turn uh, produce a comprehensive report to government so that government will address this issue completely. Uh, just before the commencement of the heaviest of the rainy season, for every state in the Federation, were given funds runs into billions in order to prepare themselves. It just so happens that in the instance of these dams, there is a special case and that's why a special committee is being set up to look at the technicalities of uh, evaluating. The, they built so many years ago. It's a question of evaluating them and seeing what can be done to strengthen them. To leave any store on time. We are going to count on all north and crannies of this country, both the new, both the old, uh, both the old dams and the new dams that need to be constructed. That are going to be done by Mr. President Directive with the technical committee, the technical experts. We are going to do our need for. You talk infrastructure fund, which have anticipated that we need to rehabilitate dams and irrigation facilities so as to expand uh, both our dams, infrastructure, and irrigation facilities. So a due course technical expert will be co-opted to help the committee discharge its assignment effectively. The entire ministerial committee will equally consider the creation of a project delivery unit to provide technical support in Abuja, Usmanswell, NTA News. A look at legislative matters achieving economic transformation poverty reduction and self-sufficiency in food production requires the acquisition of skills in advanced agricultural practices. This prompted the Senate to pass at second reading a bill seeking the establishment of the Federal University of Agriculture and Tropical Studies in Oshun State, sponsored by Senate leader Okbayemi Bamideli. Senate also adopted a motion from Senator Abdul Fatai Buhari urging the federal government to complete the rehabilitation of the Ogbomosho or your road. Senate has in the meantime invited the Minister of Works as its plans to investigate the reasons for the abandoned road project. And the House of Representatives has unanimously passed a resolution seeking amendment of the National Honours Act of 1964 to ensure what it calls parity in the conferment of the national honor of Grand Commander of the Other of the Niger, GCON, on the Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. This follows the adoption of a motion of urgent public importance by Deputy House Spokesperson Philip Agbesi on behalf of the 360 members. The lawmakers describe the conferment of the national honors of Grand Commander of the Yadda of the Niger, GCON, and Commander of the Federal Republic, CFR, on the speaker as a discriminatory subordination that should be corrected. As co-head of the National Assembly and accordingly confer the national honor of GCON upon the speaker, ensuring parity in recognition with the presence of the Senate, this should be accomplished before the formal declaration by Mr. President. The speaker is the fourth in protocol. The CGN comes after. Today, the CGN is given the award, the honor of GCON. I think there is some, some mismatch, some mix-up 
It is not something that has happened only on this administration, but it's an institutional uh, error that has festered for too long. The issues here, they have to do with history, with tradition, with correcting past injustices and miscarriage of re recognition and constitutional order. The Constitution uh, did not mention that a chamber is higher than any other chamber. I think it's about our own institution, uh, like it's been mentioned. We must rise to the occasion. It's not the executive. There is a committee responsible for that, and that committee is headed by a very senior and honorable person, and I believe he will listen to it, and that is Justice, Honorable Justice Tidi Bagi. House referred the resolution to an ad hoc committee to be chaired by the majority leader for legislative compliance. The digitalization policy of government under the federal government's strategic and implementation plan 2021 to 2025 will be enhanced so that public and civil servants can optimally perform their duties. Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Didi Esther Wilson Jack, said this while monitoring the combined 2024 confirmatory promotional examination. Haman Jabani reports. The confirmatory promotional examination, CROMPRO, is taking place across the Federation with a total of 13,993 candidates. Out of this number, Abuja has 2,573. Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, D.D. Esther Walson Jack, while monitoring the examination in one of the centers in Abuja, urged candidates to uphold the principles of public service, promising that the government will support them in any way possible. With the institutionalization of digitization in public service, more training will be carried out and commended JAM for the partnership. I see that it's a full house. We have a very good number writing the exam. There are a few technical hitches based on technology, and um, but those hitches have been resolved and we are happy that the exam is going on well. Digitalization is one of the reforms that are going on. So we are coming up with a lot of training on ICT, which we believe will help the workers as we go along with the CBT tests. Fatima Mahmoud is the Permanent Secretary, Career Management Office, Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation. The candidates were attended to promptly and uh, everybody is uh, behaving in an orderly manner. Uh, as expected of the public uh, service officers of the nation. So I think all is uh, in all, all in all, I think the, um, the process is going on smoothly. The examination is for senior public servants across the country. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. The global initiative of decarbonizing the earth in a bid to achieve net zero by 2060 may remain only a target if collective efforts are not tailored towards achieving the goal, Minister of State for Environment, Dr. Iziak Salako, at the Go Green Initiative to mark Nigeria's 64th independence anniversary, believes tree planting and deployment of technology will have a huge impact on timely realization of the set target. Charles Alpha reports. There is a saying that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. And the second best time is now. This epitomizes the huge impact trees combined with smart climate technologies can have on the alien planet if the collective effort on the ongoing green initiative is sustained. The Ministry of Environment, AK Connect, and their partners acknowledge the need to promote environmentally sustainable initiatives and are using the occasion of the 64th anniversary of Nigeria's independence to commence planting of 1,000 economic trees by engaging students at the University of Abuja to protect the planet and promote nature-based solution while also connecting people through decarbonization to meet the net zero target. It's not just an activity, it's a mandate and we are committed to it and we are committed to the global initiative of decarbonizing the earth while protecting the planet. Highlighting the importance of trees Minister of State for Environment, Dr. Iziak Adekunle Salako said this initiative aligns with the ministry's target of planting 6 million trees this year 
and President Bola Tinubu's sustainable forest management and conservation efforts. Our strength in Africa is nature. Yeah. And that is why we have always promoted nature-based solutions, like tree planting that we're doing, you know. But we cannot but also utilize technology, capture carbon capture technology are very critical. The groups are confident these collective efforts will go a long way in meeting the environmental and health needs of students in tertiary institutions. Charles Alpha, NTN News. Sequel to several intelligent reports, both internally and externally, the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, has raided supermarkets and markets within the FCT and its environs with the aim of mopping up all counterfeit and illegally imported cosmetics products in supply chain. The Investigation and Enforcement Directorate of the agency has successfully carried out another mop-up raid operation on the FCT metropolis where several illegally imported and unregistered cosmetics products were evacuated from stores in Wuse and Gurki markets. The street value of the items removed from the places the agency visited is about 37 million naira, and it will investigate, it says, the sources of these items while taking strong regulatory action against the culprits and initiate the destruction of all violative items according to NAFDAQ extant laws and regulations. The agency also wants to advise Nigerians to be watchful of any suspicious product and also report any suspicious activity to the agency for swift response. And just before we go, let's check out Thursday's weather prospect. That's the news. Thank you for your time. I'm Ruth Aguwele. My sign language interpreter is Shagun Ajayi. Have a good evening.